Enterprise Asset Management provides a comprehensive end-to-end solution for maintaining an organization's assets while minimizing costly downtime and maximizing usable life. Now, from a ServiceNow perspective, what exactly does this look like? Well, welcome to day 20 of 100 Days of ServiceNow, and today I am over the moon to be joined by one of the ITAM GOATs and GlideFast Consulting's Service Delivery Director, Sandeep Bobber, to talk it all out. Welcome, Sandeep, to the stream. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> good to have you. Good to have you. What is 100 Days of Service now without the air horn? So I'm happy that you are joining me here in conversation. And I told the folks that this is going to be an electrifying conversation. So I can't wait to get into it. And I know you have something coming up. We'll save that for a minute. I want to welcome everybody to the stream, by the way. But let's start off. Like, What are the main challenges facing organizations when it comes to enterprise asset management? Yeah, that's a great question. So when it comes to enterprise asset management, a lot of organizations just don't have the visibility into their assets, right? So when you start to think about enterprise asset management, you're starting to think about, you know, what assets do you own? Where are they? How much do you have of them, right? Do you have stock rooms? What are the stock levels? How much did you pay for it? And having that lack of visibility is a huge struggle that a lot of organizations face. And it's very hard to overcome. Alongside with the visibility, um, you have a lot of inventory planning. Um, So how do you plan to know what do you have inside your stock? What are you thinking about when it comes to how much are we spending towards our budget for our enterprise assets, uh, as well as How do we plan for this, right? Do we need to return assets? How do we purchase them? Are we leasing them? Are some coming up to end of life? Um, As well as streamlining and automating uh, a lot of these processes that help enterprise asset management. So from an enterprise asset management perspective, a lot of it is only so much around the tool, but it's also the process and the fundamentals uh, that help drive this. So can you streamline some of those approaches Is your tool that you're using today uh, to manage your enterprise assets, are they okay? Is it able to expand and see uh, different uh, business units across your organization as well? There's a lot of headaches when it comes to enterprise asset management and especially how uh, how to fix it. In a previous life, I was a 911 operator for LA County Fire Department and we had assets all over the entire county, right? We had some major battalions that had their own assets, but we also had assets that we needed in case something went out, something went down, and being able to manage all that. Now, I was with the fire department many, many years ago, but I can imagine how organizations might be working from things like an Excel spreadsheet and inboxes. Talk to me a little bit about what those workflows look like and how that can kind of minimize the headache that you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of, uh, you know, one of the, one of my favorite features uh, of enterprise asset management is is a multi-component module that you have to manage different models that are basically made up of smaller assets. So you mentioned your example of being, uh, you know, working at, at a fire department. So think of all the different assets that you have when it comes from an enterprise perspective. So if you take your fire truck alone, Uh, You know, you have ladders, you have axes, you have face shields, you have oxygen tanks, uh, different types of hoses. The the list goes on and on. But how do you understand which of those assets that you have in stock and what of those assets are made up of smaller assets, essentially? So if your fire truck breaks down, you may need a new spark plug. So keeping a lot of these different smaller assets available as well as being able to monitor different stock levels uh, allows you to streamline this process so much more easier when an issue occurs. So if your fire truck was to go down, uh, one of the features within ServiceNow, uh, Enterprise Asset Management, is the multi-component module that I was talking about, where you're able to attract smaller models, uh, and then that makes up a bigger asset altogether. So if something goes down, you're able to track the stock levels of them, understand how many you have, 
uh, as well as where they are located from different locations as well. And some of those automated processes that we were talking about is automatic stock rules where if any one of those spare parts or main assets were to fall below a certain threshold, you have that capability of uh, automatically reordering those assets, either pulling it from existing stock, so maybe from a central warehouse or from purchasing it from a vendor directly straight away. I like what you said. I think about how, especially with the fire department, we run on the idea of things must get taken care of immediately. Urgency is always the underlying factor that kind of moves the organization. What resonated with me, what you said, was that whole idea of minimizing downtime by knowing, you know, like this is over here, let's get this online here. And with that, talk to me a little bit more about how downtime is minimized when you have these flows in place. Yes, absolutely. So if you want to think of pretty much any industry uh, can, can be used for enterprise asset management. Let's take uh, automotive, for example, or manufacturing. So you have your assembly line um, that could be made up out of, a, let's say, a big robotic machine. Uh, and so when that assembly line stops, uh, it's causing, it's affecting your bottom dollar, essentially. All production has stopped. Mm -hmm. All of your staff is waiting. Um, there's no productivity happening at all because that one critical machine is down. Now, understanding what makes up that machine, where those spare parts are, how it works together, uh, allows you to be able to pull directly from stock and to fix it. And that's going to increase your bottom line to ensure that productivity doesn't end. From different uh, industries as well, take healthcare, for example. If critical machines such as an MRI machine goes down, now it's no longer affecting your bottom line. It's starting to affect, uh, you know, people at a whole, right? So if people can't go and get their MRI machines done or go for an MRI or leverage an X-ray machine, um, any, any, any asset that you can think of, essentially, um, being able to request it, uh, understand how it was procured, uh, understand where it is today, how much it costs, who's using it, where it is. These are all processes that are available out of the box with minimal configuration uh, within enterprise asset management with ServiceNow. People love the idea of out of the box. People love the idea of it being able to fit seamlessly within my organization. This was a main question that I had because I'm thinking like, wow, you know, you're talking about different organizations from healthcare to emergency services to banking, all kinds of different organizations. What does that look like when you're able to kind of create the solution for organizations as diverse as those that you mentioned? Do those, how flexible are those out of the box solutions and is much configuration needed when there's things that are pretty unique to that particular industry? Great question. So ServiceNow does a great job providing out of the box workflows. So even from a uh, hardware request flow, for example, you have the ability to, the, the shell essentially is already there where you're defining what assets you have. So from a uh, military perspective or a defense industry, you could have a service catalog that shows your army boots, uh, your ammunition, uh, different weapons, uh, different tactical gear, uh, any sort of equipment that you have, and you're able to streamline that uh, by going through and selecting exactly what you own. So in terms of a configuration standpoint, uh, the user or organization would look to populate the different models that they're willing to have and support for their organization. And then it's really as understanding how that flow works, right? Do we need to get different approvals? Is it around a different dollar amount? And who does these tasks get assigned? So the minimal configuration part is really just defining those key parts and you're able to get up and going straight away. And that's one of the beauties around it, especially being on the ServiceNow platform, you have that ability to look into different departments as well as you're all on one integrated source. So being able to understand, uh, you know, all the different incidences that have been 
perhaps uh, associated to a specific asset helps you plan better for the future, right? Maybe you don't want to order that same model again uh, if there's a problem with it. I love everything that you're saying. And I want to shout out because we got some people shouting you out <laughs> that are joining us here live. Good to have you here, everyone. Sandeep, who's the ideal customer for a, an implementation for enterprise asset management? So that's the great thing about enterprise asset management. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. Uh, you have that capability of leveraging this as enterprise asset management focuses on your non IT connected devices. Mm. So anything from healthcare and life sciences, defense and law enforcement, financial services, retail, transportation, manufacturing, you name it, it's applicable and it, you can, you can get instant ROI straight from, from leveraging this solution. Listen, when you talk about uh, improving ROI, you are just making every CIO, every manager you know, very happy saying that. I, I want to take a quick little break now, but I have a question I want to ask you on the other side of this. But everyone, you know that this is 100 days of service now, and I'm pleased to be joined by Sandeep for this day 20. Tomorrow, tomorrow we have another edition of live service now coaching with mark scott who i'm really excited to host mark's got a lot of things going on so i'm really excited to to have him here coaching some of the folks in the new school who are just now breaking into the ecosystem and on the 31st this is someone who i have been trying to get on the stream for a long long time we have camille briscoe she's platform owner at LA Superior Court. She'll be here talking about her journey. We'll have a kickback. So it's going to be a really great time. So I'm looking forward to having her on the stream. So mark your calendars, tell a friend, and I will see you there. But don't you go nowhere because we're still talking to Sandeep. Sandeep, how did you get into service now? Um, it's, a, it's an interesting story. Well, at least I think it's interesting. I'm sure um, it is. I'm sure it's electrifying, as a matter of fact. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I first started off um, doing IT support. Uh, so just normal desktop help desk support, uh, you know, worked for a big organization. Users would call in, go out and help and fix their machines and such. And, you know, it, it came to a point where I was getting tired of crawling underneath people's desks and seeing what they ate for lunch last week and stuff um, that, that, that I really wanted to change. Um, so at that time, uh, ServiceNow wasn't around, actually. Um, I started on old HP tools and, and that platform mm. uh, there where it was an older UCMDB and NASA manager uh, working with the, the, the HP tools uh, was my sort of foundation into IT operations management uh, as well as IT asset management. Uh, and then as ServiceNow started to gain traction, um, the company that I was working with at the time pivoted and so did I. And we really embraced um, service now, and I loved everything about it. Having that, that capability, just being all on one platform is huge. Um, especially coming from working with, uh, one specific tool just for UCMDB or to populate your yeah. CMDB and another tool that manages all of your assets. And then another tool that's just managing incidents or, uh, incident problem and change and another tool for secure on and on and on. Right. And that's one of the selling features about ServiceNow, right? It's so great. It's so easy to, to be able to leverage it. Um, and so that's that's where I started, essentially. I started off in Geneva, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the Geneva version, uh, and then uh, hit the ground running and haven't looked back. Uh, just been just been fortunate to, to find my way to, to GlideFast and uh, enjoying every minute of it. How long have you been at GlideFast? Uh, I, it's only been a couple of years, but it feels like longer time flies when you're having fun. Um, it right? is by far the best place that I've been worked for. Um, I love it. The culture, everything about it. I couldn't think of a better place to work. Uh, it's just one big family and wouldn't have it any other way. Indeed. Indeed. Were you immediately sold, um, uh, on service now because of all of the, the functionality and it being an all in one solution, was that kind of the selling point for you? Yeah, and I think it was, it, it's cutting edge technology. It's always evolving. There's always a new feature or product or yeah. some sort of enhancement that's coming out. It's never static. It's always dynamic and it's growing with the industry and the times we live in today, right? So even from 
uh, you know, the pandemic and designing different applications to help streamline that, you know, that that still even ties back to enterprise asset management, right? You know, uh, supply chain issues that, that, that we face today in stores, right? So before four years ago, you could walk into any store and there'll be products on the shelf. And now it's, you know, at one point it was hard to find toilet paper or soap or yeah. cough syrup or, you know, medicine. So understanding, you know, some of these things, it all ties back into ServiceNow and how you can automate some of these things as well, right? Yeah. You, you go back to those dock levels and ensuring that they're always there. Um, you're always going to be green if you, you have automated processes doing a hundred different things and you're able to, you know, lower your resources that have to manage them as well. Were you always attracted to the asset management part of service now? Like how did you get, how did you kind of niche down into that area? So uh, my, I, I started in IT operations in the ITOM section around, you know, discovery and service mapping and working wow. through and doing a lot of those projects, um, discovery and, and asset management pretty much goes hand in hand, yeah. right? The first question when it comes to asset management is what do you own? how do I populate it, right? And so we need some sort of a discovery tool to do so. Um, and so understanding how the two sort of went together really helped me uh, learn more about asset management. And that's what started to drive me more towards it. I think for me, the simplicity of, of that product line and how it benefits organizations is such an easy concept to explain and understand as well. Yeah. Right. And today you need to understand what you own. Where is it? Who owns it? If we asked anyone on the call today, if you were to ask three questions, what do you own? You know, where is it? Uh, how much do you have of it? What did you pay for it? How did you acquire it? Um, you know, can you streamline it? Is there any automated processes to it? And uh, last but not least, uh, can you scale? Right. So and all of these things, enterprise asset management does even asset management, hardware, software. I don't know. I can go on and on forever about it. <laughs> no, this this is great. You know, it's making me think about you have a webinar coming up and I actually we should to talk a little bit about that now. But you have a really great skill set when you talk about your experience in ITOM and then also with enterprise asset management, which makes me feel like, wow, you know, a potential customer is really kind of getting the best of it all when you have someone who is really adept at both of those. But we have a webinar coming up this Thursday, right? Um, can yep. you tell us a little bit about the webinar, who this is for and what folks can expect? Yeah, absolutely. So the webinar is around a cost savings with ServiceNow's IT asset management. And that's going to be broken down into three main areas, hardware asset management, software asset management and enterprise asset management. Uh, me and my two esteemed colleagues, uh, Lauren Stindall and Chris Kieser, uh, will be presenting uh, those three areas and talking to organizations how you can save uh, as well as, you know, get the most out of asset management within those three areas on the ServiceNow platform. Yeah. You know, so folks, if this sounds like a solution that your organization is in need of, you can sign up by following the link that's in the description for this stream. And there's also a, a QR code that's at the bottom of this screen that you can take and just kind of scan with your phone. But if you're watching this from your phone, no worries. Again, the link is in the description for this video. Uh, it's still time to sign up. This will be taking place this Thursday. And it looks like there is going to be a giveaway. So one lucky attendee is going to get a book, a free ITAM book. I'm just kind of reading this here on hardware asset management. So, I mean, what's not, why not go ahead and just <laughs> sign up for this workshop? So before we get uh, out of here, you talked about visibility and then I kind of think about visibility from kind of a different perspective too. Talk to me a little bit about the dashboards because I think being able to have that quick snapshot of like where things is, is sort of like a really cool feature uh, with, within um, enterprise asset management. Do you care to share a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So with enterprise asset management, uh, you know, even along with hardware and software asset management, you have your asset workspace. Uh, it's, it's been out since San Diego um, version of ServiceNow. 
um, but is essential, essentially your main central tower. So that's your one, two stop where you're able to go and do all of your uh, enterprise asset management functionality. Uh, understand what sort of requests are coming through, how many assets you have that could be nearing end of life, uh, and how many assets are associated to incidents, where they are located ge geographically, who has them. Um, there are hundreds of out-of-the-box reports uh, and widgets that go onto these dashboards. And the great thing about it is that it is all customizable. Mm. So for customers who are leveraging these products, you have the benefit of seeing the out-of-the-box reports that bring you a ton of value. And then you also have the added value of being able to customize it and making it more personalized to your organization and your industry that may, ensures that the results that you're seeing is more meaningful to yourselves as well as to your organization to ensure that they're able to do their day-to-day -day job functionality yeah. that much more better and faster. Yeah, sure. Before I let you get out of here, I have to ask you this question. I'm going to just kind of pop back over here for a moment regarding this webinar. You have, it's going to be yourself, Lawrence Tindall, who is the, the HAM expert, and you have Chris Kieser, who is the software asset management guru. I'm thinking about what is it about this team and GlideFast Consulting that makes you all the team to go with when you're looking for asset management? Well, I think we're going to need another hour or so there to be able to answer <laughs> all the great things that we can do. Uh, however, you know, we are the best of the best. Uh, we've won a number of awards, you know, the Elite America Awards Partner of the Year twice in a row, back to back. I don't think anyone other company has done that before. That might be um, a first. There you go. So, and, and from, uh, you know, even just talking to, you know, about Lawrence uh, and Chris and myself and the rest of the GlideFast team, we've done hundreds of these implementations. Uh, you know, when we do an implementation uh, with a ServiceNow partner, uh, they grade us on how we did through a CSAT survey. Uh, and I'm proud to say right now, we have a five out of five survey result for our ITAM practice. Uh, so we've done so many of these implementations that we have the knowledge and, and the experience and all those little gotchas that, that organizations want, right? Anyone can come in and read a manual and click here and click there and, you know, check a box and, okay, now your, 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 your product is implemented or, hey, this feature is now implemented. But what makes us special without giving away too much, I feel somewhere Michael Lombardo is shouting, you know, don't say it, don't say it, don't give away the secret sauce. But for us, um, it's having that expert, expertise around it to tell you why that's important and what are the benefits that you're going to get. When we do a project with any organization, you know, it's a vested interest. We get happy on wanting customers to succeed and come back and say, hey, look at the great work that we did at the end of it. You know that old saying, like, there's no better feeling of looking back and saying, you know what, I helped build that and look yeah. at it go now. And, you know, seeing a customer being appreciative and understanding that thank you so much for guiding us through this process and maybe some of the the, the, the bottlenecks that may have occurred or, or difficulties, but we get through it at the end. It's never how you start, it's always how you finish. And we always manage to, to ensure that we walk away with happy customers, repeat customers, and we're always looking to do more. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. That Didn't I tell y'all it was going to be electrifying? Look, <laughs> this is Sandy Bobber, uh, GlideFast Consulting Director of Service Delivery. If you haven't signed up for the webinar, be sure to do so by scanning this QR code somewhere at the bottom of this frame, or you can also click the link that is in the description for this video. Sandeep, I want to thank you so much for joining the stream, and I will see you at the webinar. Sounds great. Thank you so much for having me, Kali. I really appreciate it. Of course. I'll see you soon. Yo. Sand deep. I mean, what was it? What did Grizel say? The man, the myth, the legend. Um, we were in for a true treat. Again, if your organization is in need of an asset management solution, you know where to go. There's a, a QR code 
on this frame there's also a link in the description for this video and be sure to join me tomorrow for another edition of live service now coaching with solutions architect Mark Scott, and on the 31st, we'll be back for a ServiceNow kickback with Kamel Briscoe, ServiceNow platform owner at LA Superior Court. So until then, everybody, stay curious. Bye.